All right. Hey, what's up, everyone? Day Trader Rockstar here. And um, we're going to talk about what makes a successful uh, a trader. All right. What's the difference between a successful trader and a trader that either blows up of his account or just gets frustrated and quits out, quits altogether? And uh, it's probably something that could be seen in every aspect of c competition, every aspect of life and stuff. Um, you know, I always say that, you know, a, a great trader is like a great boxer, is like a great baseball player, like great in whatever whatever field he's doing. You have a certain uh, characteristics that each one of these champions brings to the table. And it's usually, and it, it crosses across the different sports and everything, and it all comes down to discipline, 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 right? To be disciplined, to be able to, you know, to apply your trade effectively, being able to... Um, do your research and you know do your exercise whatever it takes you, you put the extra time in to be good at what you are and those people are the ones who are become great at what they do so again as a trader you know we're throwing out there and it's it's not like you know uh, traders are just uh, you know they just fall off the trees they don't you know you have to develop a certain uh, certain character characteristics and certain attitudes to be successful and it's just you know something I've realized over years because you know you you make those you know, mistakes in the beginning and stuff and then you can look back at yourself and find the growth throughout your the whole progress of you becoming a professional or maybe a full-time trader whatever you are looking to do when I started I was looking pretty much for freedom being able to do what I want to do and not worry about the the chains of money, you know, having you need to, you need the money basically to do what you need to do. So, um, you know, this was a uh, a means to the end or a way to get money, but it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. You know, you see everyone else making money, and the next thing you know, it seems like the market's working right against you. And what happens is, is your mind becomes, you know, like everyone else's mind. You become a bunch of sheep, and you hear what's on the news, and you get affected, and all the market feeds off of this, and. It's truly an amazing thing when you look back at it because I tell you most of the times you look back at what you expect to happen and it's most likely the market does the opposite thing. Uh, but that's you know just other theories altogether. So basically what I want to try to talk about today is d discipline and how important it is to wait for your pitch, so to speak, in the markets. Um, and I was going to use a baseball analogy. And if you were a baseball player and you were – you, you, your batting average was over 350 uh, but against you know fastball pitchers. You know, right-handed pitchers. Someone that throws a fastball, you can hit it, but you can't hit a curve or a slide or anything else. So, you know, every time you try to hit those, you, you know, your time is off. You strike out. So, what, what, what do you end up doing? These, these, these uh, players end up waiting for their pitch. So, and you know, they're not going to swing at something in the dirt. They're not going to swing at something that they're not 100% sure they have a fighting chance on. Because this is, you know, this is what they do for a living. They have to be serious about it. So, the same thing. It's like. If you could see in a, in, on a chart and look back and tell you, you know, the places you could have pretty much guessed guessed that the uh, the market was going to bounce, and how would you go go about doing that and just looking at certain patterns? So again, I would start off looking at the stochastics and knowing that the stochastics, being one of a, a great momentum indicator, once it gets oversold, you have a better chance of a market pushing up. So in these cases, you, each one of these cases, you have you have that opportunity of an oversold stochastic and an opportunity here. So these are your. This is your main criteria here. Your secondary criteria or secondary indicators are going to be trend lines, uh, moving averages, and overall patterns. In some cases you might not find the other two. In some cases you will. In this case, you're not really finding. You're seeing a lower low, and you're you're not really getting a, a bottom here. But at this point here, you get an oversold stochastic, and you have a double bottom, which is in, which is a good divergence. Um, so this would be your high probability setup, you know, and probably a better shot of breaking through this downward trend line, which we did. And again, you can see the first pullback here was a buy and a push back up, and you know a push back down. Again, you can see the stochastics for maybe the fifth time uh, in a level where we're, we're familiar with. So this actually could be a very good setup on DGX going into this week. But mainly, what I want to you know show you about this is how important it is to identify a stock or a chart that you want to follow. Pl you know, um, look at it. Just know that there's two different type of entries. You have your primary entries and your secondary entries. The primary entries are when you have that established trend line. You have the oversold stochastic. You have both of those things lining up. All right. And once you have those both lining up, boom, you have, you know, the probability of the trade working out is much greater. 
And, you know, that's your high probability ent entry right there, especially in a pattern like this, a nice established pattern. And then finally we get a break out of this. Uh, and then what's interesting here is your secondary entry. It's, again, whenever you have a pattern breakout or a trend line breakout, the first time the stochastics get back into an oversold level. Um, you want to trade that level, and hopefully you're on a uh, support line or a, um, a, a recent trend line, which is called a retracement of the trend line. In some cases, it can be the 200 to 50 period moving average. I tend to find that the, the retracement of the trend line is one of the most strongest uh, setups there, so I tend to look for those. Again, that's my fastball. You know, I'm able to hit that, you know, recognize that pattern, you know, trade that pattern when I see it. That's why, you, you know, you establish yourself a, a great, great watch list or a focus list that you go through each each and every week and you have about 100 200 stocks on it you then narrow it down eventually they start rotating into these patterns here's blackboard we took this trade uh, reckon first of all the, this was a great trade recognize the wedge pattern also recognize the divergence of sideways consolidation on the pattern and the stochastics were pulling back and we're pushing up against the trend line so we knew that the, pa that the trade was going to be to the upside and it did break to the upside and it really ran, you know, from 36 to 35 to 45 and pulled back. And this is really the first pullback. And what was good about this pullback here on BBB is that you have a trend line established. You have a 50-period moving average in the over oversold stochastic. So this, this area right here, because all those things lined up, you have to take that trade. You just have to take that trade. That's your, that's your fastball. And when you're looking for it, you, you see it on the map, you see it in front of you, you swing at it. You have to take that trade. The object as a trader... Remember, it's not we're not computers. We don't know if we're right or wrong until after the trade. But if we can limit our downside and and, and, and you know and get into as the best possible area we're going to get, knowing that some some plays won't work out, they'll break down. But those you know we'll take those as they come. And the object is to get yourself in the best position possible in each you know trade, so you can take a minimal loss and let the the runners run. So the buying on a pullback and an upper trend line here just makes you know it's just logical and again a lot of it to do with logic in the markets too so I hope you are enjoying this little little education here but again it's so important PCP this is another trade that um, put on the watch list last week and again it was just a classic pullback on the stochastics right down to the 50 period moving average which is very strong it even had a lower trend line so you knew that you're in this area that was a, a good level to start buying this thing and because it's such a strong stock nice price point you know, anywhere in that level was going to give you a nice trade. We took that trade, and we made some nice money on that trade. So this, again, another situation where you get your, you know, you're just taking the trades more and more. That's what I'm planning on doing more and more on the watch list. Is just actually you're going to see them, you know, slowly uh, progress towards a level where they're all high probability setups. And if they're not any good setups, then we're going to just classify them as secondary entries. So for primary entries and secondary entries, and um, you know. Everything else in between would be lower lower class entries or higher risk trades, and those are your you know your cheaper stocks. So um, let's see, GIL. We talked about GIL on the watch list, and uh, again, beautiful pattern here. I just want to go over it again and just recognizing the uh, doubles, the double bottom there, right here. The two bottoms, equal bottoms. This is Tocasics came into oversold in the pattern. So that pattern they're tying everything together. You got to buy off of this, uh, you know, multiple indicator setup right here, and that's your best bet because you're 75 percent into the pattern on GIL now I got a lot of other stocks to go out I wanted to get a little education but mainly a kind of a pep talk and get you motivated into trading here uh, CAG here another great channel break out of the channel first retracement back to the channel is consolidating looks great again on the watch list and um, I think that's about it so I'm going to try to get some more videos out maybe we might even do a podcast later uh, I'm Day Trader Rockstar. I trade the markets every day on daytradingradio.com. Come by and uh, check it out. It's from uh, 9.30 to 4 o'clock each and every day. And we call out the markets. As you see, you actually see the charts right up on the screen, and you see the, the patterns playing out. And I get to call those out and trade those. So I um, hope that you enjoyed that. Any questions or comments, you can send an email to ironaction at yahoo.com. See you in the markets.